Bond yields are headed back up. I think they're headed back up to 5% and higher. The Fed already panicked. That's when the Fed pivoted, when rates were up 5%. That's why they pivoted, not because they, they won the inflation war, because they were losing the bond war. They know that we can't afford to pay these yields, and so they did the pivot. But the next time, when rates go back up again, what they can't already pivot on rates. They've already done that. They're going to have to pivot on QE. That is going to be the big pivot, which I believe is going to happen this year. It's going to happen before the election. The Federal Reserve is not anticipated to initiate policy easing until May, as traders speculated on Friday. This conclusion follows a week marked by robust economic data and central bank commentary, which eroded confidence in the prospect of earlier interest rate cuts. Foreseeing potential future developments, American stockbroker Peter Schiff predicts that if interest rates rise again, the Fed won't have room to pivot on rates, having already exhausted that option. Instead, he speculates that the Fed, under the leadership of Jerome Powell, may resort to quantitative easing, a strategy involving the creation of more money. Peter suggests that a return to QE by the Fed could be a response to stimulate inflation with the hope of generating positive economic effects before an upcoming election. This strategic move is expected to have favorable impacts on markets and real estate, ultimately benefiting gold prices and mining stocks. As of November 15, 2023, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet amounted to approximately 7.1 trillion US dollars. Notably, the most significant increase occurred in the first half of 2020, a response to the economic challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The expansionary monetary policy was not unique to the U.S., as other institutions, such as the European Central Bank, also adopted similar measures to stimulate economic growth. Addressing the global financial landscape, Peter highlights that countries like Japan and China, alongside the entire world, are actively selling substantial amounts of U.S. Treasury bonds. Even the Federal Reserve itself is part of this trend, selling treasuries every month. Peter, however, expresses skepticism about purchasing long-term bonds with 10- or 30-year maturities, deeming it impractical. It is well documented that China holds a significant amount of U.S. debt, but Treasury Department data indicates a noteworthy decline in China's holdings. From August 2022 to October 2023, there was an 18% reduction in China's holdings of U.S. Treasuries. The Wall Street Journal further reports that foreign private investors and central banks now own only about 30% of U.S. Treasuries, compared to 43% a decade ago. China and Japan are reported to have reduced their U.S. Treasury holdings by a combined $182 billion during this period. These trends underscore shifting dynamics in global holdings of U.S. debt instruments. Come along as we explore the valuable insights presented by Peter Schiff. If you want to keep up with our newest videos, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Japan is selling treasuries. China, their whole world is selling treasuries. And the Fed is selling treasuries every month. Who's buying them? Beats the hell out of me. I mean, I wouldn't want to buy them. I mean, I know there are some people buying them. The money markets are buying them, right? They're buying the short-term treasuries. Who the hell's buying a 10-year or a 30-year, right? You got to have your head examined. Now, some speculators bought them. Right, they got, they got a bid when the yields were up at 5%. I think you had some traders come in. They're selling now, right? Bond yields are headed back up. I think they're headed back up to 5% and higher. The Fed already panicked. That's when the Fed pivoted, when rates were up 5%. That's why they pivoted, not because they, they won the inflation war, because they were losing the bond war. They know that we can't afford to pay these yields, and so they did the pivot. But... The next time, when rates go back up again, what, they can't already pivot on rates. They've already done that. They're going to have to pivot on QE. That is going to be the big pivot, which I believe is going to happen this year. It's going to happen before the election because they're going to do whatever they can, again, to stop Trump. I mean, they already have, right? They, they've charged him with all sorts of crimes, and that doesn't work, right? That, that, that hasn't done anything. So how, how are they going to keep him from the nomination? Well, they've got to try to convince the voters that the economy isn't as lousy as they all know it is. I mean, that is the reason that he's popular, because Biden is so unpopular, and so is Kamala Harris, by the way. Even if Biden steps down, if Harris fills his place, that's not going to help. And I don't know how Biden steps down and they bypass Harris 
and piss off all the African Americans, right? Unless they're going to come up with another African American woman to cut the Fed. That's all they got. And, you know, Powell, you know, and Trump, there's no love loss there. I mean, Trump appointed him, but then, you know, they got into a big argument, right? He was, you know, beating up Powell all the time, uh, threatening to fire Powell. Uh, so Powell probably doesn't want Trump to win. <laughs> and so what are they going to do? They're going to go back to QE. They're going to go back to creating more inflation. And they're just going to hope that the consequences of that inflation, the negative consequences, don't show up until after Biden is re- reelected. But they're hoping to get the positive, right? They're hoping to boost the markets, boost real estate, right? Make people feel better, right? Because they got more money. And that's what's going to happen. And nobody's really focusing on that. But that's going to be a huge positive catalyst for, uh, for the price of gold and for these mining stocks. And I know that during Trump's first term, it was a pretty bad four years to be in the gold business. I mean, Schiff Gold and all the major gold companies saw a drop in sales when Trump was president. Why? Because so many gold buyers were Trump voters. And these Trump voters were very optimistic during Trump's first term that Trump was going to do what he said he was going to do when he ran the first time, which was, you know, pay off the national debt, right? That's what he was going to do, right? He was going to have such a booming economy He was going to reinvigorate manufacturing. He was going to cut government, make government smaller, make America great again. And so a lot of the Trump voters who would normally be buying gold, who were buying gold when Obama was president, they stopped buying because they believed all this. Peter emphasizes that even during the sell-off, gold held above the $2,000 mark and closed the week just above $2,030. Peter interprets this as a positive signal suggesting the potential for a substantial upward movement towards new record highs. Gold, currently hovering just below its all-time high, faced a notable sell-off during the week, marking its most significant weekly decline in six. Federal Reserve policymakers' comments throughout the week tempered expectations of an imminent rate cut, impacting the precious metal's performance. Despite this setback, gold began the week trading near $2,050 per ounce, supported by safe haven demand due to the Middle East conflict and a prevailing belief in the likelihood of future rate cuts. Peter points out that inflation, which predates Biden's term, is anticipated to worsen regardless of the election outcome. This contrasts with the sentiment during Trump's term, where optimism about economic improvements led some gold buyers to reduce their positions. Peter anticipates that people will now be inclined to buy even more gold during Biden's term due to the expectation of increasing inflation. Examining recent inflation data, there has been a downward trend since its peak at 9.1% in June 2022, which marked the highest level since the early 1980s. The annual inflation rate in the U.S. eased to 3.1% in November 2023, the lowest in five months, compared to 3.2% in October, aligning with market forecasts. Let's get back to the interview. All we're going to do is get rid of Biden, but we're not going to get rid of the debt. We're not going to get rid of the inflation. And in fact, the inflation uh, that started well before Biden took office is going to get worse regardless of who wins the next election. And so you're not going to see the same type of reaction uh, where people are going to, you know, not buy gold. They're going to be buying even more gold. Uh, uh, during Trump's term than they're buying now uh, during the Biden term. So the key is to load up on it when you can. Uh, Don't wait for Powell to actually show his hand and go back to QE, which is is coming. In fact, some Fed speakers have already hinted on tapering back the, um, uh, the, 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 the QT, which is the first step to ending it and then reversing it, which they are going to do, right? I think before the election, that's the only thing they have. They are going to uh, crank up the presses. It may start as early as March because that's when the program to bail out the banks from last March expires. And so they have to do something. And so that may be the catalyst uh, to restart quantitative easing. The ironic part about the bad earnings is that it's inflation. That's the problem. The companies that are reporting bad earnings, it's generally because their costs are higher than they thought. Why are their costs going up? Inflation. Inflation is driving the costs up. 
The problem is gold has not gone up enough to offset that because nobody realizes or believes that inflation is, is a threat. They think the threat, again, has been, has been neutralized, but it hasn't. And the fact that these mining companies continue to report these rising costs, I mean, that throws cold water on this whole inflation is dead narrative all by itself. Because if inflation was not a problem anymore, well, then gold miners wouldn't be seeing uh, these increasing costs. But everybody is seeing increasing costs. But it's particularly important uh, to this sector, especially since the sentiment is so low. The sentiment is horrible. But if you look at a chart of gold, the gold chart looks extremely good. I mean, gold is just below its all-time record high. And in fact, even though gold sold off during the week, at no point did it even go below 2000. I think the low was around 2005 or six. I mean, you know, don't hold me to that, but it was something like that. We closed the week just above 2030. So we're holding that level very well. And to me, it looks like we're getting ready for a big move up to new record highs. Just a week ago, the probability of an interest rate cut in March from the current range of 5.25% to 5.5% was seen at nearly 80%, reflecting faster than expected declines in inflation. Fed policymakers themselves had also signaled at their December meeting that their rate hike campaign was likely at an end and that in 2024, they would probably start to reverse course. That's it from us. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and remember to activate notifications by hitting the bell icon. Your participation means a lot to us. Thank you.